What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Goose and we're gonna be making some parts today for this thing. Well, I don't know about parts, but we're gonna be solving a problem. Um, a little bit different video this time. I wanted to take you guys on this journey with me on kind of how I go about making some parts or design a little bit of CAD work. Uh, like I said, a little bit different than normal video than just sitting there wrenching all day. But, oh yeah, um, LS3, brand new, gently used. No, I'm just kidding. It's a brand new LS3 from Blueprint, of course. Brand new LS3 Blueprint. This is a 530 horse. And yeah, um, this is going to be going into our next build, but I want to solve a problem. And again, we're going to be making something for it. And what it is, I'll tell you, we want to paint the motor. We're going to end up painting this block, but you guys already know when you go to paint something, you got to mask everything off. You got to mask on things that you don't want painted, all that good stuff, right? And the biggest headache for me is obviously that when it comes to painting. So... What we're gonna do, of course, we got the 3D scanner right here, ready to go. That thing is not cheap, by the way. Um, laptop, ready to go. We gotta hook everything up a little bit. We also gotta calibrate that thing, So, but I ain't gonna put you through that. But we're gonna scan the engine, get everything scanned up, and so that way we have something to go off in CAD. And what we're gonna end up doing is we wanna create some kind of cover slash my idea is actually a uh, sticker based kind of like they did here with blueprint you see how they kind of have these little stickers that just kind of cover up your exhaust holes here we're gonna do kind of the same similar concept but we are actually going to create it for all the different areas that we technically don't want paint going in or on so that way when you go to paint it you don't have to take you know, I don't know, taps and clean out these thread holes and things like that and remove paper towels and cushions. Like, look, I even already have little paper towels and cushions in these holes because we don't have anything to cover it with. Now, I went ahead already and started the scanning process a little bit. Went ahead and got ahead, I should say. And you see these little target dots? You can kind of see them. They look like little target dots, exactly what they are. Now we have them all over through the motor already, just so our scanner, those are gonna allow us to keep track of where we're at in space, if that makes any sense. As a scanner is moving along like this, it helps, those targets help it keep track and know where it's at. So that way, when you come around an object, you come around a corner, it knows where it's at. But so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this actually off and we're gonna scan it with the intake off. I've already loosened the bolts. All we gotta do is pop it off because what I wanna do is we're gonna create, like here, we're gonna create stuff for the water pump. We're gonna create stuff obviously for this guy here. So that way you guys can take it, put it on, paint it, and then peel it right off. Like so easy, so quick. But let me go ahead and set the scanner up real quick and we'll get started. I think we got it all scanned up. Um, let's go to the computer. Let me show you what's going on. I showed you guys a little bit in that little scanning video there. 
but let's get a better look. So here, this is kind of what we ended up with. This is kind of the motor more or less in space, right? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean it up a little bit more. Um, of course, we're, we're not gonna get the bottom side. I'm not too concerned with the oil pan. And we would have to put it up on like a uh, engine hoist or something like that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the next step. Let's see here. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna take it, it's gonna process, it's gonna get rid of all those unwanted stuff, um, all the little fuzzy stuff as well. But here, you can also look and you can take and you say, hey, I don't want this, I don't want that. You can kind of cut stuff out, like we'll probably end up cutting the engine stand out of here. So that way we can just work with the motor back. But let me do that here in a sec. It's kind of hard to do it here, holding the camera and everything, but give me one sec. All right, now that we got our software opened up, we got the motor cleaned up, we started drawing here, and this program here is actually part of the 3D scanner. So it basically allows you to make any more corrections to the scan before you move forward into the CAD software. So what we're doing here now is we're trying to kind of get an outline, trying to get these cross sections built, and it really is gonna give us a surface and allow us to work in CAD a little bit easier, a little bit smoother. So what we're doing here is we're taking those water pump area and we're kind of highlighting it and we're saying, hey, this surface here, we want that to import into our Fusion 360 program so that way we're not working in midair. And so if you just take this file, it gets imported as a mesh. Basically, it's an incomplete part. So it's basically not a solid, it's basically air, if you want to call it, more or less, with some measurements and things like that. But if we take these planes and input them into the software before we go into CAD, it's going to allow us to have something to work with, so we're just not working in space. So what I'm doing here is we're trying to create all these cross-sections, trying to get all these planes for the exhaust, for the most side of the motor, mounting points in tank and then you got to kind of do one at a time because it takes a little bit of time if you guys slow this thing down it actually this is hours of actual work and this is not even beginning to draw the actual patterns yet quite but we can go ahead and actually take this information and import one at a time into our fusion 360 program and then we can probably start drawing with the stuff that we have here so now we're going to take it, we're going to import everything, and this is our Fusion 360 program slash software. So this is really where you design, you create solid parts, you create sketches and things like that. You can see here is we have the side planes where the actual exhaust manifold would go or headers, whatever you want to call it. So we started drawing using kind of the planes and the information that we exported from the other software, you can kind of see, it kind of gives us a good area to start with, kind of gives us a baseline, right, just to speak. But if you can see, you really have to trace this thing in like one corner, one edge at a time. But even then, the information that you took from the scan is not going to be perfect or exact or anything like that. So we really got to draw this thing a little bit at a time, not to mention make adjustments in real time, even when you have your final sketch, it's never final. Like it's never going to be final because you don't technically have the motor in the program. You kind of have it in space, right? So you're going to have a little bit of an error or even small things that you can't sing or the scanner didn't pick up or something like that. Or you can just be all millimeter off here and there, and you're just do your best to really come close. The 3D scan just really gives you a baseline and gives you just a good solid idea of components, parts, curves, geometry, and things like that. So you can see here we got to kind of adjust all our curvature, um, certain lines, points, and things like that. But you can kind of see here you got incomplete lines things like that that came over from the scan so you got to be careful not to use that stuff here you can see we kind of are mocking it up with the motor and i took the time and actually started drawing the rest of the different parts that we're going to make in here 
So you can see I have the water pump, I have the head, I have the in tank already drawn up, and here you already have them in a solid piece. We've already kind of took the time and sketched them all out like we did with the exhaust manifold, but here I bring them to life and you make a solid piece out of them that you actually can 3D print, you can laser cut, plasma cut, do whatever, export it in a certain file in order to bring it to life. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to export this stuff at a DXF file and we'll take it to our laser cutter and see if we can cut it out of vinyl or some kind of sticky stuff we have there. Uh, the sticky paper, I should say. So here, once again, we'll take it. We'll do each individual part one at a time. So we got to do the in tank. We got to do the head uh, left and right because they're actually different. Same thing with the water pump. They're different left and right. The only one that's the same is actually the header area. You can actually take that and inverse it and put it on the other side, no problem. So what we'll do is we'll save each one of these one at a time, basically as a DXF file, and then take it over to our cutter and see what this thing looks like. Obviously, this took hours and hours, and we just kind of sped up the footage for you guys because I don't want you guys sitting here all night. So... Let's get to it. All right, now that we've got all our files, we went ahead and uploaded them to our laser cutter program software here. And you can see I try to fit everything in one cut. This is basically the size of our cutter that we have like engraver, I should say. We're gonna see if we can cut everything in one go. All right, we are in the garage, you guys, now. We gotta go ahead and hook up our laser cutter here we're going to hook it up because we're going to try to attempt to cut these basically these stickers out whatever you want to call them paint kit prototypes you know so let's go ahead and link this up real quick here we got to link our laser up they don't show you exactly what we got going on all right so that's linked up hooked up let me show you guys what we did because i don't have anything that big you guys can see you guys remember on the program is that we are using that whole workbench space slash work laser table whatever you want to call it basically that entire length of that workspace to put all those stickers on um of course i don't have anything that big to cut that much out so I had a bunch of these like little, I don't know, eight by 11 sheets and we literally just taped them. We taped them together to make one big sheet and hopefully we can get away with getting them all on there. And um, again, they're not gonna be perfect, but again, this is straight up prototype only. We got to test fit everything, but let's get cut and let's see. What we're gonna do is first, we're gonna tell the laser to check this, the workspace to make sure it's big enough for what we need to do. Let's do that. We're basically going to frame the whole thing out and make sure we have enough space for all those um, cutouts. Oh yeah, we got them all out, you guys. It was kind of a pain in the ass because you guys remember I had to put tape on the back side of these things, all these sheets to keep them all together. Well, the, the laser cutter didn't really cut 
all the way through the, the other tape. It cut through the vinyl or whatever the sticky stuff is. It cut through that, but it didn't cut all the way through the tape behind it. So it's kind of a pain in the butt to get them out. Not to mention, because of so many freaking parts and pieces we basically glued together, or taped together, I should say, that I had to go back and put tape in all these little areas because it was just falling apart. Obviously, the stencil, the cutout, whatever. It, again, I have some other vinyl on order that um, it would have been better for this, but it didn't get here in time. So we'll try it next time with that. And that way, it's all one piece. But for some prototype and stuff, you know what? I'm going to give you guys some of this stuff away. I'm going to give you guys. So the first five people to comment on this video i'm gonna hook you guys up you gotta subscribe you gotta like the video and you gotta tag us once you guys get your kit on your motor but let's let me let's throw these on let's throw them on the engine we got the engine here ready to go we'll see how they fit let's test fit them because maybe you guys don't want them maybe they fit like crap so we'll see Well, you guys, epic freaking fail. These, this multi-piece thing was a complete disaster. Um, you saw I ruined, I ruined this side because it is like I can't use the same one for both sides. It's a left and a right because you can see how that's not going to work. Obviously, you flip it 180, which is the other one that I just destroyed would have been money like that so but you can see definitely it, it this one was definitely gonna fit really nice that would have been so good so let me reprint them um i'm gonna wait for the other ones to come in and then we'll be back they're all cut out you guys you guys missed it no uh a couple days later for sure we went ahead and got the new vinyl in and you can see we got them all cut out because now we can take them over to the car and put them on and see how they fit. Or I should say the car, the motor, right? I had to put them in here and put these weights on them because you guys can see, man, they curl up and that vinyl is not good because it comes in a roll. But again, this is definitely going to be one of those things where we're just trying them out, checking fitment. Not to mention, you guys, this thing is not the best thing to cut vinyl. I hate I had to do a lot of different passes because on some parts, you know, because of how it sits and how it bu bubbles, I guess, or not even, um, it was hard to cut in certain corners and stuff, but let's try them out on the motor and see how they fit.
Well, not too shabby, guys. It's definitely helped with the one-piece vinyl. Um, but what I did notice, the adhesion on this vinyl, not so great, especially for um, aluminum, uh, metal, whatever you want to call it. It probably would probably go good on plastic or on a car or something. But this, the motor didn't definitely not like. You can see how it's bubbling in certain areas. Not to mention, I didn't clean the block. I didn't like, you know, if anything, you probably want to use some rubbing alcohol to clean the surface off before you put your uh, stickers on, vinyl, whatever, you know, you basically, before you mask it really, right? But um, I like it, the overall fitment. Um, we got a couple little areas that are not perfect, but I think they're, they're good. Like, I think we can get away with that. I personally would be okay with that. And even if we went to paint it and you had a couple little corners that were showing for whatever reason, I, I think that's bare minimal. That's something you can always put a little uh, paint thinner on and stuff like that. But overall, I like it. I even like the, um, the size of the holes we did here. Like that's your oil dipstick and that's your, uh, what's that, crank sensor back there in the back. Even for motor mounts, you see these guys here because the reason I'm, I'm doing a couple circles in this area where you'd have bolt holes in because whenever you paint a block, man, you go to remove um, basically all that old paint out of there. It's a pain in the ass. You got to tap it, clean the threads out, not to mention where you're going to go ground your engine. That's another reason why I want to do these kind of little basic paint covers or, or whatever you want to call them so you don't have to go and re-tap all your ground uh holes and things like that not to mention on the heads back of the heads and again most importantly uh the oil pan dipstick there and don't want to get anything in there when you're going to paint your motor but i guess said i do want to send a couple of these things out to you guys to test fit them so if you guys have a an uh well you want to test an ls1 we want to test a 4853 and what else we got out there the ls7 um what else maybe an ls9 they're super rare i don't know if we can find one obviously this is an ls3 so it should i mean it should have any problems with that but do me a favor um the first you know five people to drop a comment and say that they're interested and they have a motor just sitting in the garage that they can test fit these on there i will send you guys some of these from the vinyl kit just to test them and see how they fit and see if there's um any issues on those other motors like i said the ls1 even the ls2 will do the ls2 so ls1 ls2 uh 48536060 if you got a 60 lying around um what else like i said any of those motors the first five people that comment will hook you guys up with one of these again they're just gonna be um that'd be great i think for storage for sure but paint not so much yet like i said i'm gonna find a different material that's not gonna like bleed into these because i don't feel good about this the adhesion on this was not very good so i think you can have some like bleed through if you were to paint with these on there you might be able to get away with it like i said if we clean the block good and then stick them on you can see i was struggling on this side you guys putting this one on because it's it's a little bit tricky i didn't realize how tricky it was gonna be basically um not having any material here because this whole basically is loose the only thing holding it is that bottom strip so they're just kind of flapping all over the place when we remove the backing so tell me what you guys think like i said we'll send those out and you guys give me some feedback for sure um but this side did a lot better way better you can see the difference in this side this one looks way better and i think the trick was to start at the bottom start at the bottom lay the bottom nice and flat get the corners kind of the best as possible right here and then kind of work up and then that kind of gave us um a good finish overall and i think that one came out way better i didn't do this header on this side because i forgot to take out that um sensor right there but not a big deal but once again i am i, I like the idea I definitely like the idea i just got to find a different material something a little bit more tape ish you know like uh obviously masking tape that's that we can trust and we're not going to have any issues with the bleed over when we go to paint this thing primer it, whatever clean it and all that but you guys um i hope you guys like the process it's a little bit of a different video um let me know what you guys think put it down in the comments below and you guys already know if you guys have not subscribed to the channel make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notification and you guys already know stay wrenching